We have finished modeling members. The members are currently numbered automatically in the sequence they are created. To relabel the members systematically, go to Review tab, select Relabel Members. Press Yes to proceed. Select all members types, except rib slabs, as there are none in the model. Under Stories, note that you can uncheck all stories, and then select which stories to relabel. Keep it checked. Under Sort Reference, choose Left Bottom to Right Top. This means that Left Bottom Most Member will start with Number 1. Choose the same option for Walls and Beams. Reference Angle is used to identify the direction of the horizontal beams. When Reference Angle is 0, then horizontal beams are along global x-axis. Vertical members are simply perpendicular to this angle. Group cantilever slabs separately. This allows you to label the cantilever slabs in consecutive numbers after finishing labeling the standard slabs. Group members by direction. This option is only used for beams and wall members. When this option is checked, horizontal beams will be labeled first. Sort row wise. If the sort row wise option button is checked, then member labels will increase first horizontally along x axis, then vertically along y axis. If sort column wise option button is checked, then priority will be along y axis. Retain compatible labels between stories. If this option is checked, members that are at the same insertion point are labeled using the same member number for all stories. For example, all columns in axis intersection A and 1 will have the same number for all stories, example 1C1, 2C1, 3C1, etc. This option is only valid if more than one story is selected for relabeling. Member number start value. Member numbers will be started using the value specified in this field. Modify prefix character. For example, if you want to add a prefix to column using P, then instead of C1, after relabeling, you get PC1. Define direction dependent prefix. This is particularly useful for beams. Example, if you want horizontal and vertical beams to have difference prefix, you can enter H for horizontal members and V for vertical members. After relabeling, horizontal beams will have label HB1 and vertical beam will have label VB2, for example. Restart numbering for each direction will ensure that after horizontal label is completed, the vertical label will start with number 1, example VB1. Modify the postfix. For example, if you enter A and relabel a column, instead of C1, you will get C1, A, after the relabel process. Ensure to check the options as shown in the screen carefully, as the relabel process cannot be undone. Then click OK to execute the relabel process. As you can see, C1 and B1 label starts at the lower left corner. This is in accordance to chosen relabel settings. Then the label will increase from left to right, from bottom axis to top axis. For beams, the labeling will be done for horizontal beams first. Last column label is at the top right. For beams, after labeling the last horizontal beam at the top right, the labeling continues for vertical beam. The first vertical beam label will continue at the bottom left. The label will then increment vertically. Then the labeling will continue along the next vertical axis on the right until all vertical beams are labeled. The last vertical beam label will be at the top right. We will now explore the visual interrogation tool, which is very useful to assist us to interrogate and examine the model. Switch to Story 1 for the plan view by double-clicking Story 1 in the Structure tree. Go to the Review tab, pick Visual Interrogation icon. Move the dialog so that it's not hiding the main model. Under Criteria of Recoloring, you can pick column sections to color column with different sections with different color. Click on the rest, one by one, and check the visual coloring. Beam wall loads are beams with partition wall loads applied. Slab additional loads. Slab life loads. Beams with user defined loads color code all user input loads on beams. Beam with FE slab loads shows beams with finite element slab load calculation method. Since all beams are using yield line now, none is colored. 
Beams with FE slab analysis results shows beams with merged finite element analysis results. Since all beams are using building analysis results, none are colored. The rest are self-explanatory and will be explored later. After review, make sure to select none to switch off all coloring. Go to scene settings. Options that are grayed out means it does not apply to this plan view, but the 3D view. If compass is checked, then global coordinate system will always be shown at the bottom left screen, even if the model is zoomed in or out. Coordinate axis. This shows global origin. It can be switched on or off. This is the modeling guide grid, which can be turned on or off. Bounding box. If check, it identifies the extent of all the elements. It is useful to locate orphan elements that may be mistakenly inserted very far away from the origin. Go to Entity Edges tab. These options are grayed off because it's not applicable to the plan view. It applies only to a 3D view. Similarly, hidden line properties. Visibility filters allows you to filter by story or filter by axis or filter by member type. Column plan display allows you to display analysis results figures on plan view. Nodal loads and temperature loads are manual loads applied directly to members. You can display say axial loads at the top or bottom of the columns and walls, then select the load case and or combination from the drop-down list. These values will only be shown after building analysis. The option to display transfer column and walls on plan view will color discontinuous column in the floor where it stops. Go to Beam Plan Display tab. Display Partition Wall Properties allows options to show wall label, load value and height on plan view for easy checking. Display some user-defined load values will display the total magnitude of the manual loads applied on plan view. Display beam elevation marks will show the values of delta Z applied to the beam's ends, other than zero values. Go to slab plan display. Display slab direction indicators. This is with reference to the angle entered in the slab properties. Check display permanent and life load values. Click OK and go to the plan view. This allow easy checking of the slab loads that are defined in the slab properties. Go back visual interrogation and switch these off. FE contours will only be visible if contours from the FE floor analysis are exported. Animation tab. This is only applicable to the 3D view. Reset all the settings to the original. Click OK to exit. Now go to the 3D view. Go to the visual interrogation. Similarly, you can choose to color elements according to the difference criteria. Example slab thickness. Select none for coloring before proceeding. Some of the option are not applicable to the 3D view, such as column, beam and slab plan display. Go to animation. Click start. You can slide to bar to increase or decrease the rotation speed. Take note, whatever settings you make in visual interrogation are saved to active view. Hence you can open as many views as you like and use different visual interrogation criteria for each view. Click OK to close it. Take note there are also some handy shortcuts to this visual interrogation in the same review tab. Example, design status which will only be meaningful after analysis and design. Try activating some of them. Finally, deactivate all visual effects before proceeding. Under the same review tab are some very important and useful functions to check and troubleshoot the model. Building model check. The building model check will pick up the most obvious modeling errors as indicated. Click start. The warnings or errors are mostly self-explanatory. The exact members affected will be stated. You should review any warnings or errors and correct the model before proceeding to perform analysis. Click load log to editor to open the list of warnings or errors in a separate screen in notepad for ease of reference. Close the notepad. Close the dialog. Relabel members has been covered. Move member to axis. Refreshes the insertion definitions based on associated axis of insertion. Delete unused axis will delete axis that are not used by any members. Fix the almost orthogonal axis. 
This allows you to fix axes which are not perfectly horizontal or vertical globally, example axis angle of 0.01 degrees. Purge sections, deletes unused section definitions, and hence reduces project size. This may happen if your model started out with many different sizes of members which were then deleted as the project progresses. Check slab thickness. This allows you to check the minimum slab thickness according to selected code and also to set the set types automatically. Member property assignments allows you to generate a report showing element and releases, column isolator and member splices. The display ribbon groups all the functions that controls the modeling view, both 2D as well as 3D. These functions are already covered previously. Click on the Layers drop-down will reveal members and elements that can be turned on or off. Example, Axis, Beams, Columns, or Slabs. You can click Vertical menu add these icons permanently in interface as shown. In addition, you can use Filter Selection to hide or show elements. For example, click and drag a window to select some elements of Story 4, right-click, Filter Selection. This menu shows element selection in terms of story, member types, concrete grade, section sizes, and finally, actual elements. We only want to story 4 elements without slab, so untick story 3 and slab, OK. Right-click, show selected only will show those members selected, while hide selected only is the opposite. Click show, selected to get the view desired. To restore to original view, we can right-click, restore previous selection. We can right-click, click Show All. Hence making use of filter to show and hide members is very useful when reviewing, checking, or modifying the model. You can change the display style or rendering by pressing the F11 key successively, from shaded to wireframe, to linear. The linear view is useful as it is equivalent to the analytical wireframe. Example, we can zoom into the secondary and primary beam location to ensure they are truly connected analytically. Zoom out and in the entire model to check if elements are connected together via the linear view.